It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, little DA, she's here, our guest co-host. Yeah, yeah. And we open up the phone lines, 800-585-1051, talking about Jocelyn Hernandez. Now, she did an interview with Carlos King and was talking about how moms need to take more responsibility for failing at raising their children. I feel like I had a really rough childhood because, I, you know, I feel like I was never given an opportunity and like from my mom or my family. I just feel like a lot of moms don't take responsibility for them not taking care or guiding their kids the way they need to be guided or the way they need to be dealt with. And I just felt like I could have been so much further in life if she was just a better mom. I mean, you're talking about a lady that has six kids with five different baby daddies, mm. my mom. She just failed me, and not just me, her other kids, by not giving us an opportunity to be the best we could be. Oh, well, I mean, her mom sounds like she didn't have the opportunity to be the best, you know, that she could be. You know, a lot of times the parents need guidance their damn self. And, you know, that's something that I even just learned in therapy. You know, I had a lot of, you know, uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to say anger, but I guess it was anger, you know, towards my father, you know, until mm -hmm. me and my father had a conversation, and I realized, damn, my father was just a man trying to figure it out. Mm. Like we all, you know, trying to figure it out, you know? And when you talk to your parents and your parents tell you that, you know, they were dealing with their own mental health issues and they were going to therapy or they were dealing with substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, that'll allow you to give your, your parents a lot, a lot of grace. I, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we tend not to give our parents grace because we don't look at our parents as, as humans. But, you know, like, like I said, I just feel like, you know, it sounds to me like her mom didn't even get the opportunities that she needed to be a better person, so of course she can't you yeah. know, raise raise a child correctly. You I mean, gotta take yourself out of the situation, like you're saying. Instead of giving people a label of mom or dad, the label comes with expectations. Mm -hmm. You don't know them as a human being, just a woman named whatever. Right. When you look at them that way in the circumstances, then it's like, okay, so this is what led her to do that. And that doesn't mean that it's right, but it does mean you understand it better and you judge less. That's yeah, right. I, I, and, I, and I, I get what you guys are saying and Grace and, and, and all that, but I, I feel like when you have a child and you decide that you want to have a child, they decide when you have sex and that's what you want to do, there's responsibility that comes with that. Facts. And those children and, and any children, they don't come in this world because they want to come in this world. They come in this world because mom and dad bring them in this world and God bring them in this world. So once they're in this world, you have a responsibility to take care of that child. You have a responsibility to guide that child. You have a responsibility to be the best parent and be the best person for that child. It's crazy because usually, you know, people always talk about how bad dads are. Dad wasn't in mm -hmm. their life. So to hear that, it's, it sounds a little crazy. But in, in Charlamagne, you know, you got four kids and I have, I have six. You know, I have to be there for my child and not just a provider. You know what I mean? Not just a, uh, I'm going to provide money. I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to pay for that. But you have to be able to talk to that child, guide that child, be there. And, you know, we always joke as, as dads, like, yeah, I want to make sure my daughter stays off the pole. But I also want to make sure my, my son is not a drug dealer. I want to make yeah. sure my son does the right thing. He's respectable. He, he knows what he's doing. He's not one of those kids that's going to hit a woman with a brick in the face. Like, those are the things that I want to make sure my son does. My daughter, I want to make sure she's respectable that she's smart, she's educated, she can able to, you know, hold things down on her own. These are the things that we instill in our children. And if if you're a parent and you're not doing that, yeah, it's the responsibility kind of falls on you. Yeah, but there, you know, you're not wrong, but there is a there is a responsibility that comes with, you know, uh having children. Mm -hmm. But just because you have a child doesn't mean you are capable to step up to that responsibility. You might mentally, emotionally, or spiritually simply not be ready. Like what if you have the child at 16? Or Think you about did all the these underage parents. You have a child at 16. What have you learned? Right. <laughs> you yeah, like you might have did the best you could, but the best you could wasn't as good enough as you as you know your kid wants mm -hmm. it to be. Yeah, just sometimes, you know, yes, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with children. Absolutely. That don't mean that you are capable of stepping up to said responsibility, especially when you be having children young as hell. Like I yeah. said, you, you be people having children at 15, 16 years old, what the hell do they know? Nothing. What the hell are they going to teach a child? Nothing. And But I, I think a lot of that too is, is not having parents that are talking to them and, and teaching them. A lot of people that, that, a lot of people that have kids that young age a lot of times don't have somebody in their life telling them what's what's up, telling them to use protection, telling them what it is to raise the kids. Because a lot mm -hmm. of people see raising kids and they think it's fun. Oh, look at the little selfie. I could take mm -hmm. the kid to the mall. I could take him to the store. I could like do this. And do that. Yeah, but 
And yeah, it's it's all good until your kid got a hundred and three temperature and you up all night and the baby won't stop crying and you don't know what's going on or the baby has diarrhea and it's just pooping all over the place and that pampers are expensive and that all the things that parents go through. People don't yeah, see that side of it we, a lot. Of we times. have these conversations about breaking generational curses. This is part of breaking, you know, those generational curses. Well, know? let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Tierra. Tierra, good morning. What what did you think about what Jocelyn said? So if Jocelyn wants to secretly tell us that she felt that's mom, that's fine. Um, I know I'm probably going to get heat for that, but that's fine. Um, but my thing is we do fail. Everybody fell. We, you know, we all fell at something or have fell at something in life. But as long as you get back up and you try again and you take care of those kids and do what needs to be done, that's all that matters. You shouldn't, you know, shed light on the negativity. Let's shed light on the positivity. I fell before at something. But I got back up and, you know, got myself where I needed to be. Okay. Thank you, Tia. Let's go to Amy on line three. Amy, good morning. Amy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? What, what do you think about what Jocelyn said? I think it's true. because My mom did it. I'm thinking I'm going uh, oh, no, I you said your mom. You said your mom had terrible phone service, so you got terrible phone service. Oh, stop it. Take us on Bluetooth. Now? Take us on Bluetooth for speaker. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, ma'am. Okay, I said since my mom did it to me, I turned around and did it with my kids. I'm taking full responsibility, accountability. But that I, means you broke the cycle, though, right? If you recognize your mom did it, and now you're not going to anymore. I did do it with my first two kids. Oh, so you follow what your mom did with you, and you you kind of raised them like your mom raised you, and you and you you're saying that you failed. I thought it was right. How did, how did you fail? But then you eventually learned, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I had another child, and I don't do it with him. You broke the cycle. Well, how, how did you fail? What what was what was what you were doing failing? To me, I felt like I have a son that's twenty. He stayed. He stays in trouble, but before then, he didn't. He played basketball at AU. He was a great kid. So he ran into the wrong kids. So anytime he got in trouble, I ran and got him because I I used to stay in trouble. My mom used to run and get me, and it led to me going to prison because mm. I knew she would come and get me anytime I got in trouble. You understand? Right. Did he have Did he have a father in his life? Was his father around? No. And see, that's another thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like you that know, plays a big role yeah, in it. Yeah, you it can't does. you can't take full responsibility for that. Even mm-hmm. though you know that child is a hundred percent your responsibility because the dad is not around. But that dad chose not to be in that son's life. So what what role did that play? Right. The absence of the father. Like I'm we, sure we don't know. We role. don't know psychologically how that affected that young man. Mm-hmm. You know. 800-585-1051. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Jocelyn Hernandez. She did an uh, interview with Carlos King, and she was talking about how she felt that her mom failed her as a parent. And we're asking 800-585-1051. Let's talk about mothers failing their children. What's your thoughts? Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, Little D, she's our guest co host. Gang, gang, good morning. And we're talking about Jocelyn Hernandez. She did an interview with Carlos King, and she was discussing how she felt her mom failed her as a parent. Let's listen. I feel like I had a really rough childhood because, I, you know, I feel like I was never given an opportunity, and like, for my mom or my family. I just feel like a lot of moms don't take responsibility for them not taking care or guiding their kids the way they need to be guided or the way they need to be dealt with. And I just felt like I could have been so much further in life if she was just a better mom. I mean, you're talking about a lady that has six kids with five different baby daddies. Mm. My mom. She just failed me and not just me, her other kids by not giving us an opportunity to be the best that we could be. Hey man, I think parents do the best they can with what they got and I promise you that you will give your parents a lot more grace if you just have a conversation with them and see what they had to deal with as humans. Mm-hmm. Humans, period. Not not mom, dad, just humans. Like and also, Jocelyn sounds really hurt and mm-hmm. on a deeper level, it stops being their fault when you learn to heal yourself. Right. How long is it gonna be your mama's fault that you're here? Because when you learn you can fix the behavior and let it go from her, then you become better. Yeah, yeah. your trauma your trauma's not your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I would also say this too. I think every kid is different and they react to different yeah. things. You know, 
Um, I think when, when I came in this industry, my whole thing was I want to provide for my kids, right? That was the whole thing. I want to give my kids something that I didn't have, something better than I, I, I had. And I worked hard for it. I, I, you know, I traveled a lot. I was, I was on, on the road every night. Uh, so for my first two kids, Madison and Logan, I wasn't there as much as I should have mm-hmm. been because I was working. I was, quote unquote, grinding, quote unquote, hustling. And yeah, I provided them with a lot, but it also meant me missing a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it didn't bother them as much because they knew. My my other kids, my, you know, London, Jackson, Brooklyn, and Peyton, I'm different now. I'm there more mm-hmm. for them. Less focused on the finances, more focused on the quality time. And you can see the difference in the kids, though. And we just better men. That's true. Like, you know, I wasn't going to mm-hmm. therapy 10 years ago. You know what I mean? I started going to therapy like six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't... I wasn't on a journey of healing mm-hmm. 10 years ago. We was in these streets, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Too. So I'm just, a, I'm just a better man. So that's why I always tell brothers, the reason I encourage therapy and I encourage brothers to go on a journey of healing is so we can show up and be better fathers, better husbands, you know, better friends, just better men in our, in our communities, period. Charlene. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. <laughs> How you doing today? You I'm better be well. somebody grandma with a name like Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> it's Charlotte. Charlemagne. Don't start that. Okay, Charlene. How you doing, Grandma Charlene? I'm from <laughs> how the how the grand how the grandkids I'm from doing, Charlene? I'm from Duval. I'm from Duval, Charlemagne. You know okay. what time it is All with right. us. I'm, I'm gonna stand down. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your thoughts, Charlene? I know you oh. got seven kids, it says. Yes. And with the situation with mothers. We could teach our kids anything we want to, but once they get out in the world, they're going to be who they want to. My girls, I can honestly say I stayed on them, and as adults now, I still guide them. But I hate to hear people blame their mothers for stuff. Some, some mothers that know. I've been out there taking care of myself since I was 16. I ain't never been out in the street for drugs, so... We can't blame my mother. I appreciate everything my mama did for me. And Shirley, she needs too. Shirley, because, hmm? how old were you when you had your first child? 18. 18. What, you, you ain't know nothing at 18. <laughs> I'm 59. I lost my first son to jazz so with police brutality. I, I don't been through breast cancer. I've been through a lot. But I do not blame my mom for anything. And mm. she was not perfect. And she didn't teach me everything. Mm. I had to learn how to teach myself as a mother. And some of these other mothers out here, they need to learn that too. They just weak. I just feel like they weak. And, 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 and there's no manual for any of it, right? Like they don't give you a manual on how to be a good father, how to be a good mother. A lot of it is just on-the-job training and what we're observing. Right. Jaleesa. Yes. Good morning, Jaleesa. Good morning. What's how y'all doing? Doing good. What's your thoughts, mama? So I feel like, okay, like at what age do we hold ourselves accountable? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do feel like, you know, your mom plays a big role in you being successful sometimes or unsuccessful. But at what age are we going to say, okay, yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, I do need to do this a little better. Maybe I could have did this. Can't always blame your parents. You're right, but that yeah. comes with a lot of self-awareness, man. And and, and, that, and and that also comes with, you know, you taking a step back and being able to look at your situation and be like, you know what, just because my parents did it like this don't mean I got to do it like mm-hmm. that. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Hello, who's this? This is Courtney. Hey, Courtney, good morning. Talk to us. What's your thoughts on what Jocelyn and Anders said? I think she's right. I mean, you got to think about it. A lot of kids live with their mothers. They don't live with their fathers. So if you got all these deadbeat dads, you got dead bee bombers too. Mm-hmm. Damn. You right. I mean, my mama was a crackhead, so I mean, you, it's pretty dead beat. You got to think about it. If you if you didn't have a lot in your childhood or you didn't have things that you felt like your mother should have had or should have raised you or hockey, whatever, you would want the best for your kids. You always want to give your kids the best opportunity. If you didn't go to college, you definitely want your kids to go to college. If, your, right. if you don't, then that's just weird. I think it's weird. Right. Now, Lil D, you Lil, just said that's yeah. I was gonna say you said your mom was yeah, was like, on drugs, so yeah. did, she had an addiction. though. She did. No, I'm not saying like, oh, I blame the addiction. She was a terrible mom. But, but do you feel gotta, she failed you? I feel that 
she was caught up in an addiction. Um, I can't even say filming. She got pregnant at 16. Yeah, the I feel first, like society... She lost her virginity and got pregnant with me. Society mm-hmm. failed your mother. You know what I'm saying? She dropped out of school because they made fun of her for being pregnant with a bump. Like, she couldn't Dang. take it anymore. Her mm-hmm. parents didn't want her to have me. Like, it was a lot of pressure. She turned to drugs. Mm-hmm. Like... I don't blame her. Um, I'm actually appreciative because she's sober now. She's mm-hmm. good, working, got a car, got a house, life together. It You just grow up differently. It's nature versus nurture. Mm. You can decide these things happen to me and because of it, my life is just going to go however you want it. Or you can decide these things happen to me and I don't really know what good or better is, but it's got to be better than this right. and you mm-hmm. figure it out. The crazy thing about that is, is you know, every everybody's different, right? Because there's some yeah. people that would take your situation and be like, my mom was addicted to drugs. I'm never going to make it and, and kind of mm-hmm. grow up in a hole and, and, and hate themselves. And then there's some people that be like, you know what? This is going to be inspire me to work harder, to make sure that I'm not in that situation. I, and I even help my mom to get out of that situation. Yeah. So it, it, but, it, you but know. I'm sure there was somebody in your life at some point, Lil D, that put their arm around you and said, hey, you don't have to go in that direction. Or there's better out there for you. You had to be somebody. Uh, my second grade teacher, Miss Osborne, but also be mm-hmm. clear, my grandparents raised me, See, so I grew go. up Jehovah's yeah. Witness. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was in that Kingdom Hall four days a week. Me mm-hmm. too. Um, and my mom was a teacher. You four know, days. Hold on now. We was there Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday Thursday, Sunday. Saturday. And, y'all ain't go Saturday. Field service was Saturday. Uh huh. Saturday yeah, was you had when y'all was, was there. That y'all was four days. Oh my Saturday, god. Yes. Yeah. yes. We did y'all so dirty in New York. They did us dirty in Shreveport. They do them dirty everywhere. Oh. You know, they they the worst. They the black sheep of Christians. But mm. but, but but there was somebody there. You had some type of infrastructure that kept you on. The, you know, it's crazy. Right it was path. my mom. It was my daddy. Oh wow! Mm. It was my daddy. Like um, I didn't learn all like girly stuff from my mom. I learned makeup as an adult. Mm. My best friend taught me like about tampons. I didn't have that like from my like my grandma. I had it, mm-hmm. but my dad taught me so much game. He taught me so much confidence. He. He's the one who really, like, to this day, I'm a daddy's girl. Like, mm-hmm. he, so, like, I get it. We can say the mom, you need a woman to lead a girl. But for me, it was my dad. Well, I, I think that's different. I think your dad was just being a parent. I think, you know, we have roles for a reason. Like, I'm a man. I'm a father. I'm a husband. But they're just things things about womanhood that I will never know or understand. And only my wife can teach my daughters how to be women. Mm-hmm. I can be a great parent, you know what I mean, and just raise a good child. But mm-hmm. I can't teach my daughters how to be women. Correct. Yeah, shout out to all my aunties, you know, big cousins. You got to have somebody. If you don't have that family structure, have something. Like the first time, you know, I hung out with my auntie and I'm like, oh my God, you're so cool. And mm-hmm. you know, all this girl stuff that I don't know anything about. Let me hang out with you more. You got to have somebody there. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, we need we need women to teach little girls that they have to wash, wash that hair that they wearing underneath that wig or that weave. We need women to tell little girls, wash your bra so you don't get that smell underneath your boobs. Which yeah. way to wipe? Which you know way to wipe? Yeah. Which we way to wipe We need to tell too? women to tell little girls how to properly move in certain environments because yeah. I'm a man, you know what I mean? But like I said, I can't tell you how to move as a woman. I, can, I don't have that lived experience as a woman. I can tell you what I think, mm-hmm. but I don't have that lived experience as a woman. But mm-hmm. also give yourself some credit though because you're a man, you dealt with women. So like, you know what men do? Yeah, I know yeah. what men do. I, that's why I, I can tell my my daughters how to move in certain yeah. environments. But even still, even with that, even telling them how to move in certain environments is different than somebody who's actually lived that experience and been the woman in that environment. I agree. You know. Yeah, but but you know, also you know, you've been the the great father, the great guy, the great dad. But then you've been also the effort guy as well. Still don't. But, still, but we could teach. But we, you know, the the best thing about me and, and you is we're able to teach our daughters both of those mm-hmm. things. You know what I mean? So hopefully, and same thing with, with my son. So they don't go down the same line that I did. Mm-hmm. And also, your dad taught you how to shoot a gun. Mm-hmm. I could tell because you always talk about the strap. But now Listen, it makes I sense. Now one. it makes sense. <laughs> I grew up with shotguns. See, yeah, now it makes sense. Hunt deer and everything. We country. All right, all right. Well, what's the moral of the story? Is there a moral? I think we just gave it. All right. Now we got rumors on the way. What we talking about in the rumors? Give us a little tease. We from Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana. So shout out to the hot boy for coming home. Finally, uh, we'll get into that. Who's out of jail? All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.